Arsenal have gone ahead to solidify their intense to see to it that they really come out as winners to really get Ika Gundogan on a free this summer. They've gone ahead to offer a contract to Ika Gundogan and it's now up to him to review it after the Champions League game. They're going to play against Inter Milan on Sun, sat on Saturday. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. Good evening, guys. Hope you're really having a very wonderful evening. It's really hot where I'm right now, but nevertheless, we continue giving you the latest news and information coming in from the camp of Arsenal. This is the Arsenal News Show, you know, the second video of the day, and Rokan David is really your presenter. Don't forget to smash the like button, comment, and share. If you're totally watching us for the very first time, subscribe. How do you subscribe? Lower right bottom corner, there is a black button. After smashing the black button, hit the notification bell. That will enable you to get notified every time we upload a video onto this channel. As it stands, Nuno Tavares has been linked to Galatasaray. Fabrizio Romano has gone ahead and cleared the air. He has gone ahead to give us a detailed a detailed update onto the latest of Nuno Tavares. Is he returning to Arsenal or not? And lastly, Nicola Pepe, the most expensive player that Arsenal have ever signed before they are going to get in Declan Rice at £73 million from Lille. A flop, you might regard him to be that, is really one of those players that Mikel Ateta wants totally out, as revealed to us by a source coming in from France. So, Let's get into the Ika Gundogan story. Arsenal are really interested in Gundogan to sign him on a free, to come up and really get in some experience into that squad of Arsenal as he's a leader, talented, and obviously he leads by example. Last six games of Man City, he has gone ahead to score six goals and those goals have been important. If I told you watched him on Saturday, putting United the sword at Wembley, you really understand why teams are really in for him. Now, James Oli, tier one journalist coming in from <coughs> the SPN. He's a senior football reporter for the SPN. He has gone ahead and really confirmed us that Arsenal have offered a contract to Ikagundogan, who is yet to decide whether to stay with City or leave on a free transfer. But Barcelona also pushing hard for his signature. So, good news to all Arsenal fans all over the world. You can take it with the reasonable, with the reasonable in that you really want. Arsenal have gone ahead to offer a contract to Gagundogan. What other better story would you have to hear? Because players want to make their decisions as soon as possible before everything comes to pass. Because the preseason is going to be short-lived of this, of, this, of this summer. Do you know why? Players are going to play with their national teams until the 20th. After the 20th, they rest for like the 11 days, the 10 days remaining to the climax of june then five days or a week into july they'll have to return to their respective clubs to start training meaning that every player needs to get his resolution solved before the end of june and arsenal have gonna hate to make in their submission to ika gundogan to see to it that he really thinks about arsenal when he's really making the decision after the champions league finale and who is spearheading these talks? It's Mikel Arteta. After Mikel Arteta laid a fatal ground for Ika Gundogan to come to Arsenal as he convinces Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus, he's now doing it for Ika Gundogan. And this is really having a lot of positivity that I want to throw into your eyes and obviously open it up to you. Let me illuminate it more. If <clears throat> Arteta never got a positive goal from Ika Gundogan, then he would have not gone ahead to tell Arsenal to go on and really send in their offer. So, Arsenal being granted a chance to put in their offer is one of the signals that Ika Gundogan is thinking of coming to join Arsenal amidst him having very many other tables that are really fruitful onto his table. Let me show you some of the offers that he has that he has to look through and obviously pick one at the end of this month now the first one is coming in from city they're offering him an a contract extension you know one year and a further option yeah, that's why they're saying english club offered the player a two-year contract but that option yeah, is really optional as you hear it so one year and one option yeah. 
that is a two year contract barcelona have made contract have made contract offer to ika gundogan for three years two years and another optional year arsenal have gone ahead to make an offer of two years and an optional year and two Saudi clubs have gone ahead to put a hundred million euros onto the table of Ika Gundogan. So it's up to Ika Gundogan to choose where he's going. It depends what he wants. If at all he still wants to play top level football, Arsenal is the place to go all Barcelona. If he wants money, if he wants money, obviously he can go to Saudi Arabia because the likes of Karim Benzema have already gone ahead to be unveiled as El Tihad players and N'Golo Kante has just gone ahead to accept the offer of El Tihad. Everything has been signed and Fabricio Roman has gone ahead to announce a here we go of N'Golo Kante. Free agent coming in from Chelsea to El Tihad in Saudi Arabia. So he's having a lot of options. So it's up to him to make a decision on where he's going to go. But the big point I've really gotten to know out of this is all about being Arsenal having some little bit of positivity of signing Ika Gundogan because if Ika Gundogan was not considering the Arsenal move, he would have gone ahead and we told them, no offer, Ateta, I respect you, nothing you expect from me. But he has gone ahead and we told them, I want to look through your offers, bring it on, meaning that Arsenal are in consideration by Ika Gundogan and his entrage to really make it through to the London Conley and Emirates. And that really rubbishes all the rumors that he would not want to play against City in the Premier League. If at least in the Champions League, it's inevitable. But in the Premier League, he wouldn't like to play against City. But it looks like these other teams have gone ahead to show to him that they are, he's so much important to them by offering him a two-year contract and a further optional year. City are giving him one year and a further optional year. So, however much is going to hate to do lots of things for City, they've shown him that we can't offer you a three-year contract. Arsenal and Barcelona have tabled a three-year contract worth £150,000 a week, you know, times... That is times... Let me multiply and see how much is that a year. Mr. Calculator, show up yourself. Calculator, all right. One hundred times fifty-two weeks. That make up a year. So Arsenal willing to offer him a contract of close to eight million pounds a year, and it's up to him either <coughs> to say yes to it or to give it a very huge no. Let's leave the Ika Gundogan story, but you can as well go into the comment section and tell me what you think about Arsenal's contract offer to Ika Gundogan has been submitted. Do you think Gundogan is going to, to accept to come to Arsenal? Yes or no? Second story, Galatasaray. This story was really revealed to us by a journalist known as Restek Ozbuk coming in from Turkey that Galatasaray have gone ahead to meet with the representatives of Notavares, the Turkish club will assess the situation and bid once the player finishes the under one, the under one, the under twenty one tournament with Portugal reports. All right, so this story was put out yesterday, and we all knew that maybe Arsenal are really going to be selling the player. But Fabrizio Romano came up with an update today. He has told us that understand there is no negotiation or concrete chance for notavares to join galatasaray from arsenal as things stand despite recent reports alexandro on galatasaray's list as new left back in case he leaves juventus this summer and i read this story of alexandro somewhere on gate italian news in english i read it yesterday night looking like it's really concrete and when it when when it concerns players coming in from Italy, you know that Fabrizio Romano is born and bred in Italy, spends most of his time in Italy. He knows exactly what that is all about and he cannot come out and obviously doesn't give us the best that we deserve from him. And I think we should take it with a sack of salt, not a pinch of salt. So, Garatasaray are not willing to sign Nuno Tavares. If at all there is need for them to sign a left back, they are going in for Alexandro who plays as the left back for the 
Juventus side. When you look at Galatasaray, Galatasaray. All right. When you look at Galatasaray, they went ahead to win the Turkish League. That puts them directly in the Champions League. Alexandro, player for Juventus. Juventus is not going to play into the Champions League. We all know that. When you look at the Serie A and how it ended, it saw <coughs> Juventus end in a very, very, very devastating position. They climaxed seventh. That's their, that means they are going into the UEFA Conference League. That's where they're going to play. So they are going to lose lots of players because some players are not royal for the clubs. You know, players like Vlahovic, who shunned Arsenal because they were the Champions League and went to Juventus because Juventus was in the Champions League. I don't see him at Juventus for a very long time. If at all they don't make it to the, if at all they're not in the Champions League. Yet the likes of Chelsea, Man United, Bayern Munich. Are really looking to sign him at the club even Arsenal is an admirer of Dusan Vlahovic if at all they can raise some good money from the sales they can find themselves themselves getting in a world-class center forward in the names of Vlahovic so that is it concerning Otavares and that means after the under 120 after after the under one after the under 21 tournament he is really going to come back at Arsenal talk to Michaela Tata and Edu to see what his future holds because even Marseille have not gone ahead to put in a, an offer to sign the player. Is Ateta going to retain the player? We don't know, but all that is in daylight is that there are other clubs that are willing to buy him. Atalanta wanted to buy him last summer. They are willing to offer him a long season loan with a buyout clause of 40 million euros. And Arsenal said, no, we just want to give you the player on loan, no option to buy, meaning that Ateta sees a lot of potential in Nuno Tavares. But as it stands, he has fallen out with the manager of Marseille. We don't know where he's going, but his discipline needs to be really checked. That he is Tavares for you. But I like him as a player. When you look at his physicality, Tyler made for the Premier League. Skill set, great. Acts well in tight spaces. He can come through at Arsenal and obviously gives you exactly what Zichenko gets you. But the problem is one. Defensively, he gives away the ball sloppily a lot. That's it. But he's a very good player that needs improvement very, very soon. Now, after Tavares, let's do a little bit of the most expensive player that Arsenal have ever bought. That is Nicola Pepe. His record was due to be broken in the January transfer window if at all Mokalo Modric made it to Arsenal because Arsenal are willing to cough 88 million pounds or 100 million euros to learn the signing. <coughs> Sorry about that. To learn the signing of the Ukrainian wonder kid that is Mokalo Modric. Kaya, Kaya Nak, chief Arsenal writer of the football London has come in through and obviously thrown in a very important update concerning Nicola Pepe and his future at Arsenal. This is what he had to say. Nicola Pepe is no longer a part of Mikel Arteta's plans. The player has just one year left on his contract and although Arsenal are keen to garner a fee for him, plans have been made for the termination of the contract if required. Now, I think Arsenal just got to know that they really made a very huge mess signing him as an exciting player he was linked to Manchester United by the time Arsenal signed him in 2019 he was one of the breakthrough talents in the league one he had scored very many goals for you he had gone ahead to really look exciting especially coming off the right attacking side of the midfield he really promised a lot and delivered little at Arsenal I remember even Man United was chasing in for Nicola Pepe. Every top team was chasing in for Nicola Pepe. And the price tag on him, 73 million pounds, was really huge for Arsenal to commit on a future of a player. And let no one lie to you that a team goes into a contract to sign a player of 73 million pounds when that player's quality is really minimal. All doubted. Pepe had proved himself, but it looks like 
he has gone ahead to fall out with Mikel Arteta. And I understand he had a very good debut season at Arsenal. Even when Mikel Arteta came in through, he really had a very good a very good half of the season from January to from January to to May in 2020. Then 2020, 2021. He really had another good season. But 2021, 2022. Nicola Pepe fell down the picking order and Bukayo Saka took over him. He couldn't compete with Bukayo Saka and that's what led to his running to to Nice in France in the summer of 2022. But Arsenal look like they are fed up of the player. If it requires termination, they're going to go ahead and terminate the contract because he earns 180,000 pounds a week, meaning that Arsenal are really rescuing themselves from that debt from the wage burden of him and reducing the wage bill at the club of Arsenal. So, Nicola Pepe to Arsenal, what do you make about it? Would you want to see him return or do you want Mikel Arteta to really even terminate his contract at all? There is no clear buyer that is willing to pay money or cash in for the services of the player who once was one of the best young talents that the French league ever produced. And lastly, Tavares Nuno, what do you make about him? Would you support Arsenal to really stay with him or loan him or sell him? Because a loan at Massa's worked out very well and is attracting lots of interest. Should Mikel retain him, sell him or loan him? A sign out for now. See you later. Cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Ciao ciao, my viewers.